All right, now we're ready to continue. So we're gonna go back to this question mark tab. This is your main tab and your options. Now, before you do really anything, before you set up anything for any other characters, whatever things you wanna do that are universal across all your characters in UO, you wanna set up your initial profile for right now before you do anything else. So go ahead and come to this tab and click on right here in the top right corner, there's a profiles bubble. You wanna click that bubble and make a profile for each character eventually when uh, you're finished here. Every single character is gonna have their own little profile here and that'll basically just change all the client's settings, all the client macros and everything to whatever profile you have selected. So if um, if you're setting up your Orion and you're wondering why your macros aren't saving or like you're changing characters and your macros are like swapping over from character to character, it's probably because you didn't set up profiles here. So this is really important. But uh, any universal profile settings that I wanna do across all my profiles, generally what I'll do is I'll make a profile first and I'll just call it like default And then everything that we set up is going to save here under this default profile. So everything that I want to do across every UO character, I'm going to do now. So first things first, uh, I have a higher refresh rate panel other than 60 hertz. So if you have one as well, if your monitor, for example, is 100 hertz or 120 or 144, you can crank this slider all the way up to 144 is the max to take advantage of that higher refresh rate. Uh, V-Sync is optional. Um, I'm gonna turn it off, but that's up to you if you decide you wanna use it or not. Reduce FPS when window is act inactive. That just makes it so that when UO client is not your active window, it reduces the frame rate all the way down to I think about four. And you know that'll just save re uh, resources on your computer screen. So um, you scroll down a little bit, we have Animation delays, this is all just like cosmetic. You're really not, it's not gonna change the game mechanics at all. It's just gonna change the way things appear on the screen. I really haven't noticed much of a difference here, but uh, I just check Salus effects moving speed. I leave everything else the way it is. I like, I don't mind the flying animation, but if you don't like all the bats around, all the gargoyle bat people flying all their, flapping their wings around everywhere, go ahead and uncheck this. Uh, draw character shadows, again, optional. You can turn that on or off if you like. Um, right here, this is really useful for character status and world options. This makes it so that any characters that are on your screen, you can actually have them draw a health bar either above or below them based on what your preference is. So I usually like to have it display above the character as text in like a number kind of thing. And then I use... HP lower than 96%. And this will make it so that it'll only show above a character's head if their HP is below 100. So, you know, that way you don't have health above everything on screen, only the stuff that's actually taking any damage. And then I'm going to check not for humanoids only because I want to show it for all monsters and everything. But if you just want to see it for players, leave this checked right here and then you can preference either friends or enemies as well. Uh, custom careless for status bars. I'm really not actually sure what this does. Um, I'll have to look more into that. I'll make a future video about that. But uh, Noriety, this basically just allows you to pick what actually, uh, what um, things that it'll show these numbers above. So like if you don't want it to show above NPCs or any certain like maybe innocence or whatever, you can choose here which ones you do or do not want to show the uh, numbers above. And then I don't know if this actually works. A lot of, I've heard a lot of people complain about their health bars not updating. I usually never have that problem. And I think it's because I usually check this box right here. So fix status bar update for OSI. I would just make sure if you're playing on OSI that you check that box. Continuing down. We have hidden characters display mode. I have no idea what this does. I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, colorize characters by state. This makes it so that if your character or any other characters on screen for that matter are poisoned, 
they fully render as green. And if they're paralyzed, they fully render as, I believe it's red. So that's really useful for me. I'm going to check that. Uh, draw under aura under characters makes it so that any uh, characters that are on screen of like certain narieties, they'll have like a little circle below them. And I'll show you that right now. So this will make it so only if it's control pressed, I don't want that. I want to always show it. And I want to show it for everything except involves. So that'll give me a little aura underneath my character. Now, since my character is green, I have this little green circle. But if you run around and you find other players, you'll find that uh, other players have other auras. Like, see, there's a blue one on this character right here. All right, so I'm going to leave that just like that. Draw smart last target indicator gives a little indication or below your last target. So that um, that way, of, like if you've cast it on the last target on the on the screen, you can see like a little kind of circle below them that indicates like that's who your next spell is going to hit while you have a spell casted. What's nice about it is if you use smart last target, um, the little circle will appear blue for beneficial targets and red for uh, hostile targets. So it'll actually distinguish between friendly and hostile targets when you're casting. So you almost essentially have two last targets in uh, in Orion, which is extremely useful. And I'll show you that why later. So uh, draw a friend and draw enemy indicators. will just uh, draw a little arrow above the heads of people you indicate as friends and enemies. All right. Match map items and patches item or options. This stuff is like all your real pure cheat stuff like i don't know if you want to call it cheat it just gives you a, a visual advantage on the field and i'll show you what it looks like right here so like you can see um all the kind of vegetation and everything or you know in, in fell or anywhere in feluca this isn't as bad because you get everything bare you know none of the trees have leaves or anything but still it kind of gets in the way when you're trying to see so in order to like take advantage of reducing all that extra stuff on the screen, we can change the trees to stumps. That changes that all like that. So you don't have any of that extra visual stuff in the way. Marking tiles just kind of makes like a grid on the ground, I believe. Cave and land, you know, obviously, yeah, that's what it does. It kind of makes like a weird grid pattern, which may be useful for some people. I don't really like it very much. Hide vegetation, same thing, just gets rid of all the extra stuff on screen that's not necessary, that really doesn't do anything. Fields animation makes it so your fields don't actually show like movement or motion. And then tiles makes it so like they actually just appear as colored tiles on the floor, almost like house teleporter tiles. So that's like really, really advantageous for field fighting. Um, no draw roofs just makes it so that when players are in buildings, the floor that they're on, it won't draw any floors above them, so you can still see them in there. And then, you know, of course, shadows. If you don't want items to have shadows on them, you can just uncheck that box. And, uh, yeah, so pretty pretty useful options here if you uh, like this kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people like to play with that kind of stuff turned on, but I'm pretty hardcore old school and played without assistance for a long time, so I'm used to having all this stuff on screen. I actually kind of like it there. So I leave it all the way it is. If you continue on down, we have target options. We have all these kind of options in here. Disable new targeting system. So UO actually has a couple of targeting systems that are built in. And as far as I can tell, the new targeting system makes it so that you kind of get like this brace around characters. And you get like an extra health bar that pops up on screen when you have a target. Um, it's not necessary for some targeting scripts or some targeting uh, macros some other ones do use it it's kind of wonky i'm going to leave it off for now and i'm going to use salos targeting but this is purely preferential so you just find what works for you uh later on in other videos i'll go over some of the different targeting options you can use within client so uh highlight, highlight target by type i believe this is going to make it so that when targets are on screen it renders a color on them based on 
if they're neutral, harmful, or helpful. Uh, I'll have to look more into this one. And you, I in, invite you to do the same. Note send targets to invalid status bars. This is really useful. So this makes it so that if a character is off screen in like, like say, let's say you're holding a spell for uh, like an enemy or, you know, another target and they don't, or they're not on screen anymore. Normally, if you try to drop that spell on your last target, if that target was out of range or off screen, it would just dump the spell. But this prevents you from doing that. This will actually give you a little message that says that target's like invalid or whatever. And then it keeps holding the spell for you so you don't waste it. And it gives you the uh, potential to get back on screen again and, and still use that spell. Show target range makes it so that when you have a spell casted, as you're holding it, you get a little distance reticle on your cursor. And I think I can show you what that looks like right here if I just cast something simple. So if I cast, let's say, Magic Arrow, and then I have show target range on, I get this little number on my cursor that shows me how far away the tiles are that I'm targeting, which is really, really handy. Highlight area for spell targets. This makes it so that when you cast spells that have like a an area to them, like a field, for example, you'll actually get a, oops, I gotta go outside of town for this. But you'll actually get a little like um, little like a thing here that shows you where your wall is gonna drop. So that's pretty handy too. And I can't wall so apparently uh, I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> and um, going on further, we have just some options to change fonts for your journal. Um, show console entry mode that gives you this little shindig thing here to change what types of messages you're entering. So like, you can actually click these and change your, your entry mode to like all the different types within UO. You can even make it so it automatically pipe, types in party chat, guild chat, alliance chat, all that stuff. So if you don't want this here, if you're just going to use it like you used to, like uh, the old fashioned way, you can um, hide this by clicking this little arrow right here and getting rid of that. Uh, combine the same system messages makes it so that when options pop up on screen and it's like you get the same message repeating, instead of it just keeping on stacking on the screen, it'll just put a little counter next to that message and it'll keep counting up every time the game receives that message. Highlight game console, I do not know what that does. Set font for journals, self-explanatory. You know, it's going to change the way your journal's font looks. Show time, we'll put a little timestamp in every single journal message. Shave journal to a file. You can check this box and then everything that appears in your journal will actually save into a text file so that you can go over it all later, which is useful for a whole bunch of different things. But, you know, that's, that's up to you if you want to use that. Uh, don't know what this does. Yeah, I don't know what this does. Smooth objects rendering and smooth remove object text makes it so that when objects are coming on screen, rendering in, they have like um like a smooth appearing effect. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like, if you can see it here, you can almost see like things are kind of smoothly appearing and disappearing. And text will do the same. It's actually a little bit less efficient I think it probably takes more resources to do it fast like this but I like it this way my computer's fast enough that I don't really notice the difference if it's fast I don't like the smooth rendering if you want to use it that's up to you but I turn it off uh, draw helmets just makes it so if you're wearing a shroud you still like can see your helmet on your paper doll um, process, process mouse clicks without focus makes it so that when the client is not your active window, it'll still render, like it'll still process when you click the window. So if you have another window on your screen active and then you move to the client window and click, even if it's not your active window, it'll still render that click. Uh, easy grab is extremely useful. So normally when you're playing UO, if you want to grab a bar, you got to click directly on something and then drag it to get the bar. But with easy grab, you can just click your mouse 
and then drag over top of something and it'll pull the bars for you, which I can't tell you is amazing. It's one of my favorite things about Orion. So I really would recommend leaving that checked. New transparent, new transparent for foliage just makes it so your circle of trans changes the way that foliage looks when it disappears, I believe. Or maybe it just makes it so like it does that. I'm really actually not sure what that does. Let's find out right now. Yeah, it must be what it is. It's got to be something to do with the circle of transparency. Don't turn to combatant makes it so that when you're active in combat, you won't actually like turn and face your combatant like that. Like that. Um, so I don't really know if that's useful for you or not. I check it just because, uh, move game window content. I don't know what that does. I don't usually mess with that. Uh, screenshots format. If you want to save screenshots from the client, you can pick your file path here. You can also check the, uh, type of screenshots it saves. JPEGs are going to be the lowest image quality out of all these, but they're also going to save you the most space. They're the lowest uh, in, in terms of demanding space. So I usually save all my shots as a JPEG, and then you can choose whether or not you want it to auto screenshot when uh, it detects a death on the screen, and you can choose if you want it to be for yourself or other stuff as well, and the distance as well. And that's everything in what... I believe is the main settings in Orion. Um, everything else is a lot shorter and briefer, but this is the main section that you want to go over here. So don't forget, everything's going to go in one profile here, you know, that you're using. These are all your universal, this damn mong bat. These are all your universal settings you want to use across every character. So don't change anything unless you want to use it on every character initially. And then once you start, like once you log in on each individual character, you're going to come back in here under profiles. You're going to duplicate from the one you have selected, which you make sure that you actually click here, like click the text. Otherwise, it won't duplicate it for some reason. But you want to dupe it. And then you want to rename it, whatever that character's name is. And then when you select it by clicking that little red button, that'll highlight it as the active profile. And then every time you log in, it's going to use the settings for that profile from that point forward. 